Hello everyone, this is Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. Today I am super excited because I am finally going to use some printable vinyl and decorate my uh, Cricut Maker 3. So I'm going to explain the whole process here, but I wanted just to show you a little bit of what's going on before we jump right in. I'm going to be having a, a little bit of word sentiment that will be cut out on black adhesive vinyl. And I found the sweetest pictures that I wanted to use for decorating my maker. And I have pre-printed them on just regular copy paper to test out the print quality and make sure that it was going to work for the project. So what I'm actually using to do this project is the Cricut printable vinyl. This is actually really, really neat stuff. It's basically a sheet of vinyl um, with, it has a carrier sheet on the back and this will basically cut out like a sticker. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into Design Space and get everything going. Right, so here I am in Design Space and I am going to come over here to the search bar and I am going to type in Maker Decor Templates. And there are a whole bunch that you can look through. And I went ahead and made one earlier, so I'm going to just go ahead and choose the one that I made. And here it is. So I'm going to click customize. All right, so now that I am in the canvas, so here's what's happening. Um, this particular image right here uh, is one that I found in Design Space, oh, I, I don't know, a couple months ago. And so what I did is I added these three little lines of text so that I would know what I'm looking at. Okay, so then what you want to do is we can actually go ahead and hide the words. We don't need those. And these are sized exactly the way they need to be. So I'm just, if I need to resize my canvas, I'll come down here at the bottom. Um, I found some beautiful images that I uploaded to Design Space. So I'm going to go to upload and you can see all of these in here. All right. So I'm going to click on this one and this one, that one, and then I believe I did those two as well. So I've got all of the image selected that I use. I'm going to click add to canvas. These will all come in together at once and then I'm just going to have to separate them. And you'll notice that over here I have a warning right away. And that's because they're brought in at a size that is way too big. And so we need to resize these images. I just want to go until, there we go. You can see the triangle went away. Okay, now this one is actually pretty easy. I'm going to set that right here and I'm going to deal with that super fast. The, this one here I put on this corner and this one I put on these corner. These two were a little more of a challenge and I'll talk about those briefly. Okay, so what I did is I took this particular flower and I resized it and it was about that size and then I rotated it just so I could see what it would look like if I put it certain ways. So you can just rotate them around like that. Next one was this particular image here. And I resized it down. And I just moved that over here. Now I can rotate it like so. And resize it. And this one in particular is going in the corner. And I think that looks great. Now, what I can do is duplicate. So I'm going to come up here to my layers panel and I'm going to hit duplicate. I could also do control C and I'm going to bring this down. Go ahead and go to flip and I'm going to flip horizontal. And then I can just move that into this corner. So far, we've got four that are in place good to go. Now these two 
have a little bit more of a challenge because they in particular are going to kind of hang off the edge and then we'll I'll have to slice that off off and then this one over here ah there we go I'm going to blow my canvas up just a little bit so I can see these little pieces right here then we'll have to um, exclude those then we're going to go to text nope not text just kidding we're going to go back to images let's do create something all right so what we want to do or what i did is i came up with three that i really liked all right this do something and then it says creative every day definitely I want that one. I'm going to put the word beautiful right here where the creative is. I'm going to get rid of the do and I'm going to take the something and I'm going to line it up with the every day. So we have that. And I liked the create that was here. So we're going to do create something and then we need the word beautiful. I believe this is the one that I chose. Okay. So add to canvas and it will bring all three of these in. And of course I will have to resize. Now the word beautiful and the word create, those were kind of all ready, ready to go. All right, so I'm just gonna move that here and move that there. Now this do something creative every day. I am going to make that bigger so we can see what we're doing. And then I want to slice out, I just want the something and the everyday. So I'm gonna grab a rectangle and I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna put it over and make sure that I'm only getting the one word Okay, and I'm going to hit slice. Once I hit slice, and I can move this off to the side, I can move this off to the side, and then I have my original. So here is my something. And then I'm going to get rid of these two items. I don't need those. And now I'm going to slice out the everyday. So I'm gonna come over here to shapes one more time and I'm going to bring down the rectangle and I am going to cover the every day. All right, so I'm gonna click on the rectangle and the words and go ahead and hit slice. Now I can move this out of the way and actually I can delete it. I can delete this one and this one. There we go, move that. Now I'm gonna grab all of them together, bring them down, and let's resize them for a moment. So let's move the everyday down. I'm just gonna put it on that line right there. And then I'm gonna move beautiful. Just, I like to have about, a, about one block of space. And then the something Kind of the same thing there's about one block of space and i'm going to grab all three of these i'm going to go up to a line and i'm going to do a line left that will put them all together and then i will go back to a line and i want to go down to distribute vertically and then i'm just going to take a look at it and i still think the beautiful could go up just slightly so I really do kind of like where it was. Now I am going to group those together. Just, I don't want them to move separately, so they're together. And okay, then, so actually the more I think about it, this really isn't the one that I like. So I'm gonna go back to images. I'm gonna see if I can find the one that I found earlier that I liked so much more. And 
it looks really similar to that one. Ah. There we go. So create every day. All right, add to canvas. This is one. This will actually allow me to show you a different thing. So I'm going to get rid of this create that I found earlier. Okay. Now this create right here, I only want the word create. And I could very carefully slice out the everyday, but you'll notice how these are so close together. So I'm actually going to click on the image and I'm going to go to contour. And then I'm going to hit hide all contours. You'll notice that this part of the create stayed. And then I'm going to bring the E back in. I need to move. Let's see. Let me go find that little cursive E. All right, so it is there. And then we have these super tiny little, we've got one there and one there. And we have this one here. These are the inners of the word create. So I've gotten rid of everything except for the create part. Okay, so that is how you contour something out. Now I'm going to merge these two items together. All right, I think that is my original plan. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the create and the something beautiful every day. So all of this, I want it to cut out of my vinyl exactly like that. So I'm going to come back to combine and I'm going to go and hit weld. Okay, and I do need to resize that because the layers panel is telling me that it is too ginormous. Okay, all right. Now we can go back up here and see how that looks and see if it is the right size. Okay, so that definitely will fit within the sizing boundaries. And that looks really great. Let's do the slicing of this stuff right here. What I, unless, you know, someone can always share in the comments if they have an easier way. But what I did is I came into shapes and I just used this little pennant right here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and then I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to move the flowers for right now. I'm going to put them to the back. Send to the back. Okay. This will allow me to see what I'm doing with this shape right here. Okay. So now that I have this shape sized for the most part where it, you know, it matches up for the most part with the maker lid, I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to hide the lid because I don't want that to be affected. I'm going to bring the flowers. Well, actually, I'm going to send, that's already selected. I'll send that to the back. All right, and this is what's going to happen. When I hit slice, I'm going to be able to pull off the flowers in just, it'll just have this edge taken care of. Okay, it'll just have that one little edge taken care of. Then I will select everything and I will. Okay. And this is what is left. Isn't that sweet? Okay, then I'm going to come back in. And you can see the shadow layer of the flowers. That's, that's so cool. All right, but I'm going to select all of that again. And I'm actually just going to weld that back together because I can use it on the other side. And look, now it lines up where the edge of my maker is. The extra foliage has been cut off and it is the size that I want. All right, so let's go over to this side. This one, there we go. Turning it just ever so slightly. Okay, so all of the flowers are now covered by that piece. And again, I'm just going to be slicing off. Um, let's hide the maker lid. 
let's do all of our images together and then we will hit slice and I have just the part of the flowers I want and these are the part of the flowers I don't want so I can get rid of all three of those things repopulate my maker lid and then I can move it move this piece back over here and just double check and voila there it is it looks great so that was a quick way for um, for you to know how to do the contour the weld um, I took three different images to create the words and got exactly what I wanted and then I was able to put the flowers pieces where I wanted on the maker and then be able to slice off the portion that was going to overhang. Let's hide all of the maker pieces because we are not going to cut those. These two pieces here, um, I need them to print fairly close together. I'm going to move this blue flower down here. This little guy, I'm just going to slide that back up in there maybe turn it just slightly. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to put images as close together as possible. I'm gonna hit attach. Okay, mm. these two should be okay. And I'm gonna attach those. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. So when we go to make, let's go see if this worked the way I intended. I am wanting to use as limited material as possible. So I've got the two pieces here that are going to be on the bottom of, of the maker on the face of the drawer. And then I've got these two flower images here and that will be on the underside of the lid. And all four of these are going to um, print at the same time in this exact location. Um, these black markings here, these four corners, those are registration marks. And so that will tell the maker exactly where my images are when it goes to cut out on the printable vinyl. To look at mat number two, and slide it over into one of the corners. I can put it here, there. Basically, I want to maximize the rest of my, my image. When I click on continue, it's going to prompt me to send to the printer. And we'll do this for both of these. So I'm gonna do printer and it'll show the image. Okay, and I'm gonna select my printer. I only want one copy. I'm going to add the bleed because some of these lines are so, so thin and I need to add a bleed so that the maker will be able to cut out those super tiny little thin lines of uh, the foliage. And I'm also going to do use system dialog. And the reason why I like to do that is because when I go to hit print, it'll bring up the dialog for my actual printer, which so I'll select my printer and I'll go to preferences. Now your print dialog box might pop up behind your Cricut Design Space on your desktop. Mine fortunately goes on top. And then I print on, for the, vinyl, the printable vinyl, I print on matte brochure. And then for quality, I choose best. Then I would hit okay. Those were the quantity. Uh, the little qualifications that I needed to have happen and then I would hit print and I've actually already printed these so I don't want to do that again okay so by the way once the first mat is printed it'll change to printed then the second mat I would do the same thing I would send to printer I would select bleed I would select system dialog and make the same exact um, selections there as I did before. Okay, so everything is now printed on the printable vinyl, and I've got this um, part here. These are the registration marks that the maker will read 
and it will cut these out accordingly. So don't, whatever you do, don't cut these black registration marks off. And then here is the other one. And again, same thing, these registration marks are going to tell the maker how and where to cut both of these out. So the next thing is to go ahead and one at a time to load these in the maker and get them cut out. Okay, once both of your pages have printed, you'll be back at the screen and each mat um, is really not a mat. Each one of these top two will say printed. Then what you want to do is you want to go to browse all materials unless you have it already um, bookmarked. I'm going to search for printable vinyl if I can figure out how to spell vinyl. So printable, printable vinyl, it is white and I have the green liner printing. Select it and hit done. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and do remember material settings. And the reason why I wanna do that is because when I come to the second print and cut, the printable vinyl and the white green linear printing, pressure default, all of this will stay the same and I won't have to reselect it. So at this point, I would load my material and cut it out and just follow the prompts on the screen. All right, so here we are at the maker and you can see that I have the standard grip mat and I've got the principal vinyl on it in the place and definitely make sure that you use your brayer to get that nice and um, adhered smoothly onto this the mat. The maker is telling me to load the mat so that it can not only read the registration marks, but it can measure all the material and make sure that everything is set up correctly. You can see this light here is reading the registration marks. So that's the first thing that it's going to do so that it knows exactly where the boundaries are. I think that is just super cool. Okay, so it just got done scanning. Now it is going to start the cutting process. Okay, so the first one is, is done. Now we'll, the second one here, same thing. All the settings are still remembered by the machine. So I'll just go ahead and print that or cut that printing. Okay, finally, we are going to cut out the black vinyl. Now I am not printing, uh, I'm not printing it. I'm not going to do print and cut. I need it to be on regular vinyl. So I need to come back over here and click on the little down arrow and browse your materials. And I actually have it already bookmarked the premium removable vinyl. And then I'm going to do more pressure and Again, my tools and everything are already loaded so I can just send my mat through the machine following all the prompts on the screen. Okay, we are all cut out. Let's head back over to the craft table and get everything off of the mats. Okay, so I have already pulled these off of the mats and put the carrier or the protective sheet back on. I also have um, little stickers here that when I pull these off, the sticker lays like that. So I know that this side goes back on the mat. And I actually have a video tutorial on that. It was a really quick, easy project. I think it like took 10 minutes. Anyway, we're going to move those out of the way. So here are the printable vinyl. This looks so gorgeous. I cannot wait to get these off of here and get them onto the maker. Oh, and when you're pulling your vinyl, whether it's printable vinyl or regular vinyl, make sure that you turn it over and lift your mat away from the vinyl itself or cardstock or whatever you're working with and just use your hand to take the mat off. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm basically going to weed this 
just like I would if it was, um, you know, just regular vinyl. Slowly but surely, I'm going to read off the portion that is cut so we can be left with. Look, oh, look at that. that. Okay, that's what the bleed does. So see how thick that is? But then when I go to pull it away, look how thin. Oh, this is perfect. And then it literally will be like a decal or a sticker in it. It won't have any white. Um, any white border around it. It'll just look like I stuck a sticker on there. Oh, this is epic. I was wondering how that would work. I'm going to be using paper transfer tape to put this down on the maker because this is so delicate and I just don't want to ruin this with too strong of a transfer tape. So I guess if you don't have any of that, you could always use some masking tape or some painter's tape. Let's create something beautiful every day. Let's see if this weeds as beautifully as its principal counterpart. It looks great. Let me think it looks great. Um, on the on the flat surface of the tool holder, there is a little met or there's a little plastic ridge that's up. And so I folded this copy paper version earlier because what I'm gonna do is I am literally going to place this over that right there and oh can you just look at this is the bleed and this is actually once it cuts out look how look how delicate that is so definitely do the bleed and definitely use best when you're doing your print then cut okay so i'm gonna put this here and i'm literally i'm going to cut it right up the middle so that i can just Put it well not up the middle but I'm gonna cut it yeah, so that I can literally put it on either side of that ridge just like that okay let's head over to the maker and get started and getting this all on the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna clean the top of the maker and I'm also going to be working in sections. Okay, so earlier when I mentioned that I was cutting this, this is why. There's that little ridge right there. And I thought that this would just be really nice to just go right like that. So I wouldn't have to worry about that ridge. So I'm just going to make sure that this is clean. Okay, so let's see if... You want to burnish down the front and the back. 
And even with this paper transfer tape, I mean, my design is really, really, really intricate. So I do have to still be really careful. Put that on there. And I'm just butting it up against that ridge. Some of my ink <laughs> likes to stick to the transfer tape. So that's okay. There we go. So we're getting ready to take my son's in the army and they're getting ready to take his car to him tomorrow. And of course I decided to start this project the afternoon that we're supposed to be getting ready. So then I just have to, I just have to line up the pink and the blue. All right, well, let's see if we can get this one up with little to no drama. That would be really excellent. So I think not only going slow, but keeping it flat and just kind of pulling it away like that. Okay, that was the best one so far. Check that out. Carrier sheet comes off really nicely. All right. Okay. So it, you know, it looks like the stuff is coming up, but that is actually just some residual ink, which is totally fine. And I think if I'm going to drive 700 miles to meet my little soldier, take him his car, mama needs a new manny. That'll be her mom tax. Oh my gosh, look, that is so pretty. And then I'm going to turn the machine like I am so glad somebody already had the template in Design Space that made this project. The hardest part of the project was to decide what to use and where. I think I spent a couple of hours today playing with designs before I settled on one. This one is absolutely sticker worthy though. If you use a design that is pretty solid like this and not like the other ones that were super intricate, you peel off the transfer tape and you just literally put it on where you want it. So that goes down very nice. If you are not a fan of leading or intricate things, definitely find a design that is not intricate. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use one more little piece of transfer tape. Just one more piece. All right, get that burnish down. All right, and then we'll pull up the last carrier sheet. I am very impressed with this vinyl, the printable vinyl. And then it's like this. So I've had my maker how many months? Let's see, one, two, three, three and a half. And one time I tried this really intricate mandala out of um, holographic. And it was just way too small. Definitely, I couldn't read it. It it just it really didn't work very well. So I've been planning and searching for 
something that would work better. And then I just decided to go with beautiful spring flowers. You know, there's a variety of flowers on here. I like to do a variety of crafts. They're beautiful. We should create something beautiful every day. So I thought that was perfect. I guess that'll be my new tagline. Create something beautiful every day. And I think, too, another thing is not pulling straight up, but just pulling flat and across. <gasps> Look at that. Okay, so that is, let me just move this. That is the inside of the lid. Ah, it's so pretty. This is the top of the lid, which is longer. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And so when we open it, ta-da! Okay, this was a success. And I was honestly not 100% sure of how it would go. So a couple of takeaways. Paper transfer tape. And this particular one is from Expression Final. So this is really good stuff. It's like a ginormous roll of masking tape that you can cut to any size. Regular vinyl with transfer tape is not a big deal. We are good with that. Um, but definitely, the more intricate your design, the you do want to use the transfer tape. So, and then this, guys, I can't, I can't believe this. This is printed out with my inkjet printer. Like, so beautiful. Okay, well, that is the end of today's video tutorial on decorating your um, Cricut machine. This was specifically for the Maker 3, and I just found the template in Design Space. And you could do the same thing with your Explorers, your Joy, your Joy Extra. And I think the most important thing is just that we find something that makes us smile and we create something beautiful every day. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.